Hello musicians, Bucky Dirtle here. Welcome back. I'm doing another tutorial today on uh, some VCV rack um, modules. <clears throat> These are modules that are um, audio control modules like a like a mixers and mutes and different utilities. I'm going to cover a few uh, modules today. Um, these modules are not really hard to use, but uh, there are several of them. So I want to give you some options. Bog Audio has created a, a really great toolkit of modules that we can use for <clears throat> for a variety of different things. And uh, these modules are, um, they all have different purposes. Um, and it's nice to have an understanding of what's available to you um, in their toolkit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain what these do and how to use them so that uh, then you know. Okay, let's have let's have a look. First of all, I'm going to cover the following modules. I'm going to do uh, VCM, which is this guy right here. <clears throat> I'm also going to do Umix, uh, which is this guy right here. I'm going to cover Matrix 88 right here. And I'm going to cover Mute 8, which is this guy right here beside the LFO. Mute 8. So those are the ones I'm going to cover now. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to start with uh, VCM. I'll move this up here so we can see. Oh, before I do, I'm sorry. Before I do, let me tell you a little bit about my setup here that I have so that you might want to copy this. And in my GitHub repository, you'll find a file. Uh, you'll find the file that is this file. So if you install uh, the, the, the basic core and fundamentals packs, which comes with VCV Rack, and you also installed um, AS modules, this one right here, which is AS modules, and the rest are bog audio. You can um, you can have all the things here, and the file will load perfectly for you. Okay, so first of all, I have my this goes out to my sound card through my audio interface right here, um, and I'm going to be connecting my audio interface to uh, my outputs here. Um, um, oh, sorry, my mix, sorry, right here, um, out. So my left and right for my sound card. That's the way it works. Okay, and uh, this is my mixer, which is a Fundamentals mixer. I'm also using Fundamentals Scope, which is right here. Um, and uh, both of these are uh, great uh, modules to use. <coughs> and uh, actually, I'm saying Fundamentals Scope. I think it might be Core. Uh, maybe just make give a quick little check and see. Core, I think it's Scope is Core. No, it must be Fundamentals. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, and then I also have my modules here, as you can see, I have all the modules. I also have an LFO here, which I'm going to use for demonstration. And I have four VCOs, which I'm going to use for the demonstration as well. And I have AS, AS modules, uh, trigger mark one. Uh, they have mark one, mark two, mark three triggers. They're great triggers. Good stuff. So you uh, you should might want to try their triggers. I, I really like these. I tend to go to these when I'm doing these demonstrations all the time. So you may, see, you may have seen these triggers, this trigger used before. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start with VCM. So let me move a couple things out of the way. We're going to start with VCM, which is this guy right here. Uh, VCM. Now, VCM stands for um, Voltage Controlled Mixer. Um, and uh, VCM is, is a, a, a really nice little mixer where you have four channels. Uh, you have a four channel mixer and it's controlled by uh, voltages. So you can use it um, if I take a, um, uh, an LFO right here. Um, and I'm not going to, let me just rewind a little bit. I'm not going to go over uh, how voltage control works in this, in this tutorial, but you can, control, you can control things with voltage. And, and you can look at my other tutorials to see how that works. So if I, if I, if I bring my LFO onto my control voltage in, you see there's signal happening here. I'm using a sine wave. You can see there's a signal happening. So now let me just take out any old um, any old uh, VCO signal. So I'm going to go my VCO in right here, my voltage controlled oscillator in. And I'm going to go, I'm going to take my out to uh, right there, and I'm going to turn up the volume a little. And you can hear we're getting some volume. Now, if, if we didn't have the control voltage, controlling it, you see we would just get a constant tone, a constant decibel level, amplitude of a certain amplitude. Uh, but when we put this in, you can see that the um, the wave that's being produced by the v by the LFO is is uh, changing the um, the uh, modules 
Oh, but there you go. And you can see here, oopsie daisy, sorry about that. Uh, you can see here, this, this is what our LFO is doing. And the behavior of the LFO is controlling the volume of the out right here. Okay? So if I, if I change my LFO to, let's say, um, a square wave, I don't know why we're still getting a sign on that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I changed, I changed the wrong one. I changed it to a, well, let's, let's say square wave, like I said. I changed my v, a VCO to it. But there you can see, now the LFO is producing a square wave and it's creating that the distinctive on-off sound. We change to a saw wave. You can hear that. Now, these, um, this is an attenuator. So, I, as I turn this up, it increases the maximum, the maximum amplitude of the wave. If I turn this down here, it decreases the, the maximum uh, altitude, uh, <laughs> amplitude of the wave. Okay, so so that's that's that. Now uh, you can see I'm doing this with this one input. I can also take another input and and put it into my next one, and I can I can hook up another LFO if I want to. I can go off the same LFO. And I'll be getting something else. Uh, that's going to the out here. Okay, so let's do a common out. Okay, so um, you can't really hear the difference here, but let me just do this. Let me duplicate this guy. And instead of uh, doing it from there, let's take it down here. And if I turn this down, and we go in, why am I not hearing any sound? Oh, here we go. I can hear it. It's, it's just the volumes below. That's right. Triangle waves tend to be really quiet. Let's change from triangle to a saw wave. So there we have that. I can change it to like a sine wave. I change it to a uh, square wave. Right. So um, and then I can I can um, turn back up my channel one, and I can change the frequency of my LFO. So there you go, we have two inputs. So this is a voltage controlled mixer. Now, um, let me just, uh, let me kill that volume for a second. We also have down here at the bottom, we have a another CV input right here. Now we can use an LFO to control um, the, the master volume level. So if I turn my volume back up, you notice I just disconnected my, uh, my LFOs from the CV inputs on each channel. Let's put one of the LFOs onto my um, CV input for the math, the main. So now you see, now it's controlling the main. And this right now is in uh, exponential, like it's hit the linear, and it will, it will treat it differently, of course. And again, we cover exponential and linear inputs in another video, but you can go to that. Okay, and this is an attenuator here as well, so I can turn down the maximum amplitude and turn up the maximum amplitude with this dial right here. So that that's it, and of course it's times four because we have four of these. So it's pretty cool. It gives us a lot of lot of um, a lot of possibilities, but uh, but with with very little um, interface. So it, when it's not overwhelming, you know, with the amount of interface. Okay, so that's VCM. Okay, now let's move on to UMix. Okay, actually I'm going to delete VCM. Get that out of the way. Clean up our desktop a little bit. And now let's take UMix up here and have a look at it. Okay, so UMix. Umix is a <clears throat> is a uh, a summing uh, mixer. This is very 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 simple. So what this does, it takes inputs from um, from one two three four five six seven eight inputs, and it sums them out to the output. Okay, so if I just take my output, and I'll take let's take a sine wave. Oopsie daisy, why did that go? Sine wave. Let's take a saw wave from here. Let's turn up some volume. Let's take a square wave from here and change some. And let's take a sine wave from here. There you go. So we got all kinds of inputs going on. So we have four inputs. And they're all being summed down to our uh, output. Now, this is an attenuator. So again, it just lets us up and down the volume. Okay, it's an attenuator as opposed to attenuverter, which we'll talk about a little later. We have the option here of going average or summed. Now what that means, you get some distortion here now, so I'm going to turn up a little too loud. So what that means is, I'm going to turn this down while I'm explaining. Um, the average means that the output that's coming out will be an average of all the, the uh, amplitudes of all of these. Um, a sum 
would be the they're added together. It's a it's a uh, they're summed together. They're added. So um, it ends up being a lot more. Um, an average uh, tends to be a little bit more controllable, in my opinion. So I, I tend to go to average more. But but it, your whatever your needs are. Now I'm using this for our VCO signals, the audible signals. But you can use this device for um, uh, v, uh, LFO signals. So control voltage signals can be used for this too. So you can actually bring in so many LFOs and you can sum them out as well. So it's it can make for some interesting things. Now we've looked at some other LFOs in my tutorials that are really crazy LFOs. And you, if you've been following my tutorials, you know I love a good LFO. So this with this here, if you combine certain LFOs, you can get some pretty funky things that come off by inputting these together. Anyway, there's something for you to play with. It's a pretty simple little uh, module, but it uh, but it does what we need. So it's pretty cool. And you can switch uh, CV mode versus not. Okay, so that is the um, Umix module. Okay, so let's keep going. Next on the list is the Matrix 88 or Matrix 8 times 8 or 8 by 8. Now, I really like this one. I, I like I like modules that, modules that give, me, uh, give me a variety of possibilities. Um, because when I have modules that give me a variety of possibilities... That gives me a variety of possibilities for my music, and it lets me. It sometimes it gives me ideas that I didn't I didn't think of before. But as I use the the module, um, new ideas come up, and I would encourage everybody to sandbox this stuff, like take these modules and just start playing with them. You never know what's going to come out of it. You you don't know. You will never know unless you start doing it. So start making some noise with these things. And by the way, speaking of noise, you may hear my fan going in the background. Um, my I'm using a MacBook Pro. And um, VCB rack can be can be processor heavy, you know, so it's using a lot of processor power. Um, so it's uh, and I'm running OBS as well, so it's um, it's chewing up my processor, but that's okay. So that's why that's why you hear my fans running. So uh, okay, so I'm just going to put some inputs here from like these th these four different uh, modules, and actually I'm not going to use the triangle wave because that is quite quiet. So let's put it to a sine wave. Now what this does. These inputs here, like let's say the top, the green one right here, this one stretches right across all of these attenuverters, okay? And I say attenuverter versus attenuator, but this is a, these are attenuverters. And every one of these attenuverters are attached to this input right here. Now, down the line, you'll see output, 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 eight outputs. Every one of these outputs are, are attached to all these columns. So if I turn up this one, actually, let me get, a, let me get my... Uh, my out going here. Let go out to the sky for number one. Oops. Oh my, oh my. Number one. And number two. Shoot, I'm not, I don't have very good aim today. And number three. It's a lot easier with physical cables, isn't it? Okay, so we have four of these outputs connected to four of my inputs on my mixer. Let me get this down out of the way so it's a little cleaner. There you go. It's easier to see now. So now, if, and I have my volume turned up a little, a little. Like there. Okay, so now if I turn up my attenuverter here, so this right here, this input right here, is coming out through this line right here. And watch, I'll turn it off. See that? See, so I, when I disconnect, it goes off. So that's going through that one right there. This one, the second one, if I turn up my attenuverter on the same channel, both of these are now coming to this line. And you see if I disconnect my line, my uh, patch cable, it goes off. Okay. Now, as opposed to if I, I, I'll just zero that again on the attenuverter. If I turn up this guy, you hear the same sound, but this is coming to this guy now. You see that? See, so they're separated. Let's try number three. Or if I want to, I can put number three with number two with the the second one. So now, you see? So, um, and number four, let's go all the way over to number four here. Put number three. So, and what you can do with this as well, uh, let me just kill my volume for a second. What you can do with this as well is you can mix and match. Like you can send uh, the signal for uh, for like uh, v, uh, VCO1, uh, the first channel, the first input, sorry, right here, first input, you can send, like, I don't know, so much of it to channel 1 and so much to channel 3. You know, whatever you like. It's up to you. 
Um, and uh, so you can mix and match. Now you have this matrix here of eight inputs. So if I had two mixers, which I could do, uh, if I just go duplicate, now I have eight inputs, or I could use a, an, uh, like an, an appropriate eight channel mixer. But if I have eight channels here, I can run eight inputs and I can run eight, you know, eight the outputs from here to inputs on the ch on the mixer and I can mix and match and do all kinds of funky things there. So it's very cool. It's very, very cool. I, I would also like to see some CV control on this, but but that's okay. This is great what it is. It's it's great. I could use an external CV control for that, but but no odds. It's great the way it is. So and I have an attenuator right here, which allows me to control my volume here. Um, and that's so that works great. Now I just want to mention about a tenu verter. Uh, let me just let me just connect all these cables for a sec. Um, disconnect cables. I don't know if you noticed that, but on every one of these modules, you have a disconnect cables command U on a Mac, uh, and that will disconnect all the cables from a module. I'm going to take my LFO. I'm going to make my LFO take it in as an input. I'll put it down here on the bottom one, and uh, and then if I um, come out of here and I go into my um, my um, input there and turn this guy up so you can see now I have my attenuverter or sorry I turn my attenuverter up and that's puts the signal out here now this is LFO so it's it's not audible so I can't there's no sense me running into mixer because you wouldn't hear it anyway uh, but if I if I then if I if I take my attenuverter in the other direction you see makes it negative see Positive with attenuverter, negative with the attenuverter, and the further down I go, the further the more amplitude I get in that negative direction, and the more positive I go, the more positive I get amplitude in the positive direction. So that's what the attenuverter is doing for us, as opposed to atten attenuator, which you know, if I like, let me just turn this up and adjust my attenuator. You'll see it just reduces the amplitude, reduces it down to zero. It doesn't change the negative or positive of the amplitude. It just uh, increases or decreases the amplitude. So that's when attenuverter, an attenuator doesn't affect the polarity, and an attenuverter does. So uh, yeah, but that wasn't part of what I was going to talk about today. But that, but that is, but that is what I'm going to talk about today, isn't it? So matrix 88, that's that guy. Now I'm going to just delete that guy, get him out of the way. Last but not least, mute eight, mute eight. Now mute eight is a uh, is a simple little um, module as well. Uh, I'm going to give my give me an input. I'm going to go to an output to my mixer. Here we go. Now I get to use my lovely little trigger. Now the trigger here, um, when you take this out of the box, it's on zero volts, but you need to crank it up in order to get some voltage going. And again, this is an attenuverter as well, because look at this, it's negatives and positives. So I need to crank it up a little, and I'll go my out, and I'll go into here. Now we have a mute switch here on the, on the module, and it just mutes. Let me just turn my volume up. So if I mute it here, Nothing to it. Piece of cake. So you can see, mute. Now, if also, if I do my uh, my trigger, my gate, I just open it, and you can see it, it does it, right? Uh, this is a momentary. This this will also, for a split second, activate it, but it, where it's a momentary switch, it doesn't keep it open, but the latch keeps it open or closed. So so there you go. Now, um, this I'm using this here uh, manually uh, to, to trigger my latches. Um, but trigger the mute through control voltage. But you can also use a um, uh, you can also use a um, a sequencer to mute and unmute things as you feel you want to, which is really cool because if you have a, a sequencer that has you know like seven or eight channels, you, you can you can control all these eight channels here with the sequencer, and that can be starting and stopping things in rhythmic way that you want. It's very, very cool. I, I, I like this a lot. I, I think you could use this mute, mute 8 as a definite part of your music making, not just to, you know, as a utility to turn off or turn on something just as utility, but it can actually be used as a musical instrument, where if you have if you have a tone going, you can uh, trigger the tone to turn on and off as you want, you know? I mean, like, if you have, like, let's say, for example, if I was to control my, um, my, uh, Okay, so if I was do something like this, right? And then let's go. Yeah, you can you can do all kinds of funky things. Now, 
Um, it's it, I'm doing this manually with my mouse, but you know, you could if you do that with, with a sequencer, you can do some really cool planned out things with it. So I think Mute 8 can actually be used as a very interesting instrument. Very exciting, um, but I'm not going to get into that today. Um, in these tutorials, I try to only s focus on the technical and not on the musical. Maybe we should do a series of musical ones on how I would use these things musical as musical ideas. Perhaps that's something for a future tutorial or future videos. So there you go. That, uh, that, is these, uh, that are these uh, utilities by Bog Audio. Now be sure to go to the Bog Audio uh, site and check out the tutorials. Uh, sorry, check out their modules. Um, and uh, Bog Audio modules are uh, free and open source. So be sure to check out, uh, be sure to support the developers. If you have a way to maybe giving them a donation or something like that, I would encourage you to do that. Um, so this has been VCM module, the UMix module, the Matrix 88 module, and a Mute 8 module. Um, so thank you very much for watching these videos. And if you like these videos, be sure to, up, to upvote or like the videos as you see fit. And if you, of course, if you don't like the videos, feel free to downvote and, um, you know, show that you don't like these videos. And I'd like to hear your feedback as well to improve. So thank you very, very much, and I will see you next time.